Hey people, people that are interested in cats, the paranormal and things. Now I've got a couple of poem stories to read out to you. So I'm going to wear my glasses, my other glasses. So I've got the uh, screen up to me, face far too close. <laughs> it's the problems of being short sighted. And here we go. This one's called The Cat and the Moon by W.B. Yeats. And it goes, the cat went here and there, and the moon spun round like a top. And the nearest kin of the moon, the creeping cat, looked up. Black Minolushi stared at the moon for wonder and wail as he would. The pure cold light in the sky troubled his animal blood. Minolushi runs in the grass, lifting his delicate feet. Do you dance, Minolushi? Do you dance? When two close kindred meet, what better than call a dance? Maybe the moon may learn, tired of the curtly fashion. A new dance turn. Minolushi creeps through the grass from moonlit place to place. The sacred moon overhead. He has taken a new phase. Does Minolushi know that his pupils will pass from change to change and that from round to crescent, from crescent to round they range? Minolushi creeps through the grass alone, important and wise, and lifts to the changing moon his changing eyes. Uh, it says here, uh, this poem is a beautiful exploration of the mystical connection between a cat and the moon. So it's full of elective imaginary and subtle reflections on change and perception. Uh, this is another story that uh, this one Simon did and it's called Freya's Chariot. In the vast and mystical realms of the North mythology, where gods and goddess reign supreme. Stories of divine beings and their extraordinary exploits are woven into the fabric of everyday life. Among these tales, the story of Freya's chariot stands out, not only for its enchanting imaginary, but also for the deep connections between the deities involved. This tale highlights the reverence for animals the bonds of friendship among gods and the blend of strength and beauty that defines Norse law. To truly appreciate the story of Freya's chariot, it is essential to know the key characters involved. Freya. Freya is one of the most prominent goddess in Norse mythology. She is the goddess of love, beauty, fertility, war and senior form of magic associated with both prophecy and the power of influence events. As a member of the Vena, a group of deities associated with fertility and prosperity, Freya is also closely tied to Asa, the perfume of gods that include Odin and Thor. Due to the priest, the peace treaty that united these divine factions, Freya is often depicted as a beautiful and powerful woman adorned with the precious necklace prison men. She is also a psychopomp guiding the souls of the worthy dead to a hall folk bar. Um, and it says, Thor, Thor is the Norse god of thunder, lightning storms, oak trees, strength, the protection of mankind, and it's also hallowing and fertility. He is one of the most beloved and well-known gods in Norse mythology. Thor wields the mighty hammer Minyar, which is capable of levelling mountains and is a symbol of his power. 
as the son of Odin, the All Father, and the giantess Yod, Thor is known for his immersed strength, bravery, and straightforward, often hot tempered nature. He rides across the sky in a chariot drawn by two goats, Tangsner and Tangsro. He gives me the world's most impossible words to say. The cats who pull Freya's chariot are described as large, strong and majestic. Although their names are not mentioned in the ancient texts, they are often depicted as grey or blue cats, reflecting their ethereal and magical nature. These cats were a gift from Thor, symbolising his respect and affection for Freya. In Norse culture, cats were admired for their independence, agility and mystery qualities that complemented Freya's attributes as a goddess. The story of Freya's chariot. Um, in the realms of Asgard, where the gods and goddess of Norse mythology reside, Freya stands out with her radiant beauty and formidable power. As a goddess of love, fertility and war, she commands great respect among the deities. Her presence is often heralded by the sight of a magnificent chariot drawn not by horses, but by two mighty cats. These cats, a gift from the thunder god Thor, are no ordinary felines. They are large and powerful, their sleek bodies shimmering with an otherworldly glow. When Thor presented the cats to Freya, he did so as a gesture of friendship and admiration, acknowledging her unique place among the gods. Freya's chariot, guided by these majestic creatures, is a symbol of her dominance over both the realms of the living and the dead. It is said that as she rides across the sky, the bells on her chariot ring with a melodious sound that brings peace and fertility to the lands below. The cats, with their keen eyes and swift movements, navigate the celestial paths with grace and agility, embodying the mysterious and magical aspects of their mistress. Their extraordinary vehicle serves not just as a mode of transport, but as a testament to the harmony between divine power and the natural world. Freya's chariot, drawn by her faithful feline companions, continues to be a cherished tale in, North, in Norse mythology, illustrating the deep bonds and mutual respect among the gods and the reverent place of animals in their world. So, what do you think? I can't, I don't think there is another story. Oh, there might be. There is. There was another story that he did. Which... <laughs> So I'll get on with that one. Um, them two are about cats and this one isn't. But this is like a sort of... Well, you can make up your own mind what you think it's about. And this is... The news came to me in secrecy, whispered by a lone messenger who dare not reveal his identity. An important visitor arriving tonight. This was all I knew. In the quiet solitude of my humble abode on the outskirts of Endor, far crept in the tendrils of mist swirling around my thoughts. I placed the worn wooden floors, the flickering candlelight casting uncertain shadows on the wall. Who could it be? Why the secrecy? My mind raced with possibilities, ranging from the mundane to the sinister. The weight of the unknown settled heavily on my shoulders, mingling with the familiar scent of dried herbs and ancient manuscripts that lined my shelves. Hours passed like slow, deliberate steps in a dance of apprehension. The night deepened, enveloping the village in a blanket of silence, broken only by the 
occasional distant howl of a lone wolf. I listened intently, straining to discern any hint of approaching footsteps or whispering conversations. As the midnight hour approached, a soft rapping at my door shattered the stillness. My heart skipped a beat. My heart catching in my throat, I hesitated before answering the creak of the door. Echoing in the quiet room before me stood a figure cloaked in darkness, their features obscured by the folds of their cloak. In a voice barely above a whisper, I conveyed the urgency of their request, a plea for assistance under the cover of night. Beyond the watchful eyes of Endor, they spoke of matters veiled in mystery, of a need for guidance that only I could provide. Fear mingled with curiosity as I followed the figure into the depths of the forest, where moonlight filtered through the dense company above. The path was unfamiliar, each step echoing the uncertainty that gripped my heart. The air grew thick with anticipation, charged with a strange energy that seemed to hum in harmony with my racing pulse. At last we reached a secluded clearing, bathed in silver light. Strange symbols etched into the ground glimmered faintly, marking the space as a place of ancient rites and whispered secrets. The figure turned to me, eyes shining with a mix of determination and trepidation and revealed their true purpose, a desire to commune with forces beyond moral understanding. With trembling hands, I began the ritual, a delicate dance of incantations and gestures placed down through generations, invoking powers that dwelled in the shadows between worlds. The forest seemed to hold its breath, the night alive with unseen watchers as the boundary between the living and the dead blurred. And then a presence, a chill swept through the clearing, causing the flames of the ritual candles to flicker wildly. A form materialized before us, bathed in brilliant white. Its ethereal village, village? Its ethereal visage, shimmering with anticipation. Oh, sorry, sorry people. I knew I'd fluff up somewhere. <laughs> I'll start that uh, paragraph again. And then a presence, a chill swept through the clearing, causing the flames of the ritual candles to flicker wildly. A form materialized before us, bathed in brilliant white light, its ethereal visage shimmering with ancient wisdom and solemn purpose. It spoke in a voice that reasoned with the echoes of ages past, offering cryptic answers to questions that the haunted the figure. The spirit's words mirrored the warnings and judgment of Samuel in ancient times, speaking of a kingdom lost and a future forsaken. As the ritual drew to a close, the spirit dissipated into the night, leaving behind an eerie silence, broken only by the sound of my own raged breaths. The figure thanked me with a nod of their head before vanishing into the shadows, leaving me alone with the weight of secrets too profound to fully grasp. Retreating to the solitude of my cottage, I closed the door behind my enveloped once more in the comforting dimness of familiar surroundings. But as I turned to lock the latch, a sudden chill gripped my heart. A giant shadow loomed upon the wall before me, its form grotesque, grotesque and menacing. Horror paralysed me as I realised the truth. I'd been a pawn in a game older than time itself. Tears stung my eyes as I understood the deception the spirit I had summoned 
was not the prophet Samuel, but a malevolent entity disguised in wisdom and authority. Trembling, I fell to, the, to my knees, the weight of guilt and fear crushing my spirit. The candles flickered wildly, casting dancing shadows that mocked my foolishness. In the moment of revelation, I knew the price of meddling with powers beyond mortal ken. The line between truth and illusion had blurred irreversibly, leaving me to confront the consequences of my actions. The darkness seemed to press closer, whispering secrets that chilled me to the bone. I prayed for forgiveness, for protection from the unseen forces that now lurked at the edge of my perception. The night stretched on, heavy with the weight of my newfound knowledge and the haunting presence that lingered in the corners of my mind. I do actually love enchanting stories like this. I could just sit there for ages and ages. I'm just trying to see if there was another one. Ooh. Yeah, that's the only one I'm going to do for now. Uh, I remember these these ones are the old uh, ones that we did ages ago. Yeah, oh, I'm just wondering whether I'd done that story before. <laughs> probably have, but I probably fluffed it up that much. I wouldn't have noticed. But there you go. I've. And the only reason why I've done stories tonight is because we've not been out recently. Just been a lot of things going on in the background and it's just like, no, nope, we are intending to go out at some point to do some more out and about. And then we'll do some, I think we've got another manor house in the works that we want to go to. I'm not telling you where because it's a secret. So that will be uh, pretty cool. I do like getting out and about, trying things, testing things. I am thinking as well at some point we're going to do another taste test thing. I've only got a few more boxes because I actually cancelled the subscription because it was just getting too much and I just don't want to have all them snacks and sweets because it's something I've actually cut back on a lot. Believe it or not, I'm trying to lose some jiggly bits on my belly. <laughs> <clears throat> but I'm not doing this because anybody said anything to me. I'm doing it for me. So just to let everybody know, nobody said anything to me. I just don't like the idea of being in clothes that you can't buy in the flip in uh, shops. I'd rather be able to purchase stuff that I can get in the stores because bigger clothes are more expensive. Yes, they are. <laughs> and that's how I see it. Besides, it's not fun. It really isn't fun. So I always like to keep a check on myself. So if I feel that I'm getting a little bit too much, I go and do something about it. Obviously I can't run around and do exercising because my body won't let me do it. <laughs> but there you go. Anyway, wasn't that kind of thing that you're probably looking for then? Sorry. But otherwise, if you did enjoy it, let me know, please. Tell me what you enjoyed. Maybe tell me a story yourself. Because sometimes writing your own story, it's, it's interesting. You can, base, you can always just write down your, your main points, like what you would like it about, and then add that to your story. It works. I mean, I remember the days I used to do as a child. I used to absolutely love writing my own stories. Fair enough, when you get older, it's like, writing, please. No. <laughs> anyway, I will have a new video out for Monday. Despite uh, the unfortunate circumstances that happened on the Monday just past of poor little Gex, my uh, little gecko. Do miss the little guy. I did have an opportunity to get another one, but... I said to myself, it's a rescue I'm meant to be really after and I'd rather wait and it just didn't feel the right time, especially when it was just the a couple of days after he'd passed and I'm just like, I can't do it, cannot do it, 
I do actually miss the little guy. <laughs> like with any of my animals. In fact, they're all parked out there because they're getting fed soon. The cats, that is. There's only one cat in here and that's Rhea. But, uh, yeah. I sit there for ages talking to them and they enjoy it. They probably don't don't care what you say to them. They just enjoy the sound of your voice. And that's what you should do with any animal. Talk to them. Believe it or not, no matter what animal it is, they'll enjoy your voice. They'll feel the vibrations. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you like this video. Please like, share and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you.